and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys where it feels as though I haven't made a video since last year. What a classic, what a classic line that is. I'm so glad I've started the year with that line. But happy new year to all of you guys. Hope you had an absolutely fantastic night and I hope that we all here have a really exciting 2024 in store. And right here today, we're going to be talking about Messino. We're going to be talking about Zhao Felix and Vitor Roque. It is all on the way to kick off a brand new year. So let's do it. But first of all, guys, today's video is coming to you courtesy of Manscaped who want to help you kick off the new year in some serious style and I'm delighted to say here that Manscaped will be continuing their fantastic support to the channel right the way into 2024 now that's amazing here it's a big big help with the videos and I also appreciate you guys giving them some love as well that's exactly what you have been doing in 2023 because their products are absolutely fantastic I know that you've been enjoying them and I know there's so much choice there over on the Manscaped website. There's a whole range there of men's grooming products to keep you in tip-top condition this year. And if you do want to head over right now to the Manscaped website here, there's plenty of New Year savings to be had over there. And even more so if you use the Talk FCB discount code. Simply there, insert the Talk FCB code at checkout and you will bag yourself an additional 20% off your order. So there are some really good savings to be had. Head over now and see what you can find. And here's to an ultra smooth 2024. But indeed, guys, if we do move on to what is one of the most intriguing Barca transfer rumours right now, and I am talking about Estevão William, or as you may know him, Messino. And I mean, even before we get started, even before we talk about anything else, that nickname alone, that is something quite special there. You have a lot to live up to, young man, but he has been causing an incredible stir in Brazil with his performances at just 16 years old. He was another player that really impressed as well at the Under-17 World Cup. And as a result of that, pretty much every top club around Europe, they're looking at him, they're watching him, and they would love to sign him. Apparently, their Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Chelsea, PSG, they've all made offers for Messino already. But, as we so often hear, this young man would love love to join Barca. He would love to make that happen. And even more so than that, he doesn't want to give up on that dream. He wants it to become a reality. So the question right now is, is there a real chance of Barca signing him? Is this going to be a Vitor Roque sort of situation? Or is this going to be more of a Claudio Echeverri one? Well, Andre Curry is his agent. That's the place to start because he, of course, is the same man that represents Vitor Roque himself. So already they're the same agent. That's really important because he's somebody we have a fantastic relationship with as a club. He used to work here many years ago and you feel as though that relationship, again, it's going to be key. If we are going to get a deal like this done, Andre Curry is going to be absolutely vital and in the coming days he will actually meet with Juan Laporta in Barcelona to understand what's possible on this deal there. Curry is well aware of what Messino's club Palmeiras expect, the kind of money that we're talking about here. That meeting there is going to give us a much clearer idea of whether this deal can happen because of course we are very much aware all of us here of Barca's financial fair play issues and of course that's something that continues to hurt us when we're pursuing these kinds of signings as we've just seen with Echeverri but I think this one is a little bit different from that this kind of deal the structuring of it may indeed be more suited to our financial situation because the one thing that you've really got to note right now this is not a deal for right here and now. This is not even a deal for 2024 because most likely here, if Barca can agree the right payment structure with Palmeiras, there may be some sort of small payment, a down payment there in 2024, but the majority of this transfer fee, it would be paid in 2025. That is when you'd expect Messino to come over from Brazil and actually join up with Barcelona, which would again be quite similar to the kind of deal that we did for Vitor Roque. But, and this is the key right now, guys, this is the moment that is going to really divide opinion. Messino's release clause 
is 60 million euros. And apparently Palmeiras, they're quite firm on this, they'd like pretty much all of it in some way. Whether it may be acceptable to pay in instalments, we don't know at this point. But 60 million euros is the kind of figure that we're talking about. And with that in mind... Is this a road that you'd be going down? Do you feel as though this is a player, number one, that we need? He is a player that plays on the right wing. That is already going to cause a bit of debate there. And it's always tricky, isn't it, when it comes to young players from South America, especially there from Brazil, because there's every chance here that he does go on to be worth it. There's every chance that 60 million euros, maybe in a few more years' time, that could look a bargain. We've seen other clubs do it in the past. You look at Real Madrid, they took a big gamble on Vinicius. But of course, it is a gamble. He's a very young player. There's still a lot that needs to be decided in his career. There's still many things that need to fall into place and it is a huge, huge risk for any club and especially for us. It's even bigger money, isn't it? Because obviously we don't just have money to splash around and hope that it happens and hope that it pays off. We need guarantees. And that's why right now it's going to take a lot of focus from Barca. It's going to take a lot of understanding about how good he can be. We need to really know the player inside out. And I think as well, we're going to need some really hard negotiating. That is going to be really key in any deal happening. But I'm just interested, guys, to know your thoughts there. I know many of you have seen clips and highlights of Messino, what do you make of him? Would you like to see him at Barca? Would you pay the big money to get him here? And is it a deal that you think in the end we could get done? But if we do jump back to the here and the now and looking at our upcoming games at Barca, I want to talk right here about Jao Felix. Before the break, we spoke about Xavi's frustration with him, about the fact that he wasn't really convinced anymore by Jao Felix after a string of what Xavi felt was simply unacceptable performances which has led him to seriously question whether Zhao Felix should remain in his starting 11. And we spoke there about the fact that Zhao Felix may indeed drop out and he may start to be phased out of this Xavi team. And according to what we've been hearing in the media now, right throughout the past few days, on Thursday, upon Barca's return to action against Las Palmas in La Liga, apparently... Jao Felix is going to be dropped. He will not be in that Xavi team and he's not going to start the game. And I'm just wondering, guys, what you make of that there, what your reaction to that would be. Do you feel as though it's fair? Do you feel as though he's not really earned his place? He doesn't deserve to be there on that left-hand side for the upcoming match. And apparently there, it will be Ferran Torres who will replace him on the left-hand side. And I also feel as though, guys, I've got to say, it's a huge second half of the season for Ferran Torres. Make no mistake mistake about that there because despite his fast start to this campaign he had a good pre-season didn't he he started the season well lots of talk there about his mentality and the things that he's changed but unfortunately we haven't really been able to see him for a sustained period he still hasn't been able to lock down a place in this team and there's still a lot more that he needs to do to convince Chaffey so I feel as though these are big big months ahead for him because otherwise we're still going to be questioning his future come the summer again but I also want to talk about Vitor Rock Okay, because that's another player here that just comes into the equation, of course, because apparently he's had a brilliant start to his Barca career. In training, he's looked really, really sharp. A lot of the coaching staff there are so happy with him. Barca teammates are looking at him with real, real joy with what they are seeing. But I do have to say, Mundo Deportivo took it a step too far from what I saw there on social media when they said that Vito Roque, in his opening training sessions, has looked a lot like Ronaldo Nazario. That's not a road that we need to go down. That is not something that we need to say. You can think it, you can have exciting feelings, but we don't need to say that this early on in Vitor Roque's career. And my message to the media would be, let the boy play first. Let the boy go out there and enjoy his football at this club and let him settle in at his own pace. Let's not pile that pressure on him, please. But I also think it's interesting with Roque. We've spoken about him and Lewandowski. We've spoken about the two of them pushing each other, fighting for that one spot, really making sure that they're both in their top form. But I'm also wondering early on here, could we see the two of them actually play together, perhaps? Is that something that is even possible in this Chavi team, either by way of them both playing as centre-forwards in some sort of structure there, with midfielders around them there, with Roque directly alongside Robert Lewandowski,
Lewandowski. That is something maybe that could work in theory, or maybe as a game goes on, to add both of them to the team if you're looking for a goal, perhaps. But I also wonder as well, I wouldn't rule out Chappie trying out Roque at times, maybe, in a wider role. Maybe over on the left-hand side as some sort of inside forward, because we can't seem to find the answers in that position. We don't seem to have the solution that we've been looking for now for year upon year upon year. And look, Roque is not a winger. He's not going to play out there consistently, I am sure. But I'm just floating the idea here that I think Xavi, he definitely could try something. That looks like something to me that maybe at times we may see him out there and to see exactly where his characteristics fit. But I tell you one thing, I just cannot wait to see Roque. You know, I don't want to pile expectations on him. We shouldn't do that. We should not put pressure on this young man. But... I am excited for him. I just want to see him play. I just want to see what he can do and just flashes of that potential and that talent that we know that he has. And we don't have long to wait now. He will be with us in our upcoming games and we will get a look at what he can do. So please let me know, guys, in the comments down below. What are you expecting here early on from Vitor Roque? How would you like to see him used by Xavi? What do you make there of Xiao Felix if he is to be dropped against Las Palmas? And also let me know your full thoughts, of course, on Messino. And a big thank you to all of you guys for tuning in and for Manscaped for their help in supporting the channel. I will catch you soon with lots more on the way now. Wishing you again a very happy new year. And until next time, as always, Vizca Yelbasa. Uh -huh.